So let me apologize again to the CAP class. Um, work was... <laughs> no. Are we ready tonight? Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 So we'll be getting started momentarily. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome, 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 First Church. Let's give a hand. We just thank the Lord for another day and another opportunity to share around the Word of God, to learn more about Him, um, to see what the Lord would have to say to His people in this day. Um, so I, I, we're going to do service a little bit differently tonight. I want everyone to stay engaged until the end. There's going to be some questions and answers at the end, so pay attention. I will quiz you. <laughs> I'll quiz you. Um, but we will be doing a little bit of a different format. I'm going to actually utilize PowerPoint for the service tonight. Obviously, that's not something that I normally normally do. I just just go. Um, but tonight, I wanted to show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you a video tonight. And um, I need, well, obviously, for the video, I, I needed the screen. So, so I thought I would, I would just put the whole thing into a PowerPoint. That's why we're doing it in this different format. I wanted to give you a quick update on something we started talking about some time ago, quite a while ago, actually, um, regarding the mark of the beast. <coughs> so last summer, we had um, several classes studies on the mark of the beast and how it's coming, some things that were around it. Um, we, we, we talked about um, world government. We talked about um, the, the use of various technologies, etc. We talked about how things are, are starting to be embedded in um, animals and in people. People are being chipped and they're being chipped around the world. We, we talked about that, RFID chips especially. We talked about ID2020. If you, if you guys remember, go back into your notes, ID2020 is a, an initiative with a lot of prominent people in it, including uh, Bill Gates. And the idea around um, ID2020 is to ID, give everyone a digital number, a numbering system a numbering system. It was, we, you know, and, and there were a lot of other things. So if you want to go back and look at those lessons, those lessons are still on, up uh, online on Facebook. Um, really, really good information. You should brush up if you don't recall all of that. But tonight I wanted to give you an update. <coughs> I want to give you an update a few months later. Um, let's turn to Revelation 13, and forgive me as I keep looking at the monitors. Let's turn to Revelation 13, 16, 16 through 18. The end of Revelation 13. And we are talking about um, a time during the tribulation, a time during the tribulation period where the Antichrist has been revealed, the false prophet is in power and is empowering the Antichrist. Um, the two of them are working in partnership one with the other to bring about Satan's purposes and causes, which he doesn't realize is still under the power of God. And starting with verse 16, it says, and he causes all, all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And so this is what has been called, what is called the mark of the beast. If you talk to people almost anywhere, whether they've been in church or not, and you mentioned 666, most people have an idea of what you're talking about. They, 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 they at least know the words, of, you know, uh, mark of the beast and such. They might not un understand all of what that really means, but they understand those words. It's, it's prevalent in our society. It, it, it influences movies. It, it's, it influences books. People are fascinated with it because it's so important to the world. The Lord has given prophecy that there is coming a time 
when there will be a specific marking, a specific identification, a way to identify a person that will give tremendous control over the ones who are in charge or who are in power. And it goes on to say, and that none may be able to buy or sell. So this is speaking specifically to that point I just made, power, control. They aren't able to buy or sell. That means your liberties have been taken from you. We in this country feel that we have the right (laughs) to do what we want to do, to go where we want to go. If someone restricts our right to go into a place or um, complete a transaction, um, that's that's going to be a problem. We're going to see that as some kind of dis- discrimination. We're going to see this as maybe as some form of of, of 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 bigotry or some form of prejudice or some form of something that's not right, something that's unfair, right? Everyone would agree this. You, you, you should be able to go where you want to go. In in most in most cases, certainly all of the public places. If it's public, then that means it's there for you. Well, the Lord says that there's going to come a time when public places won't be public. You won't be able to go where you want to go and do what you want to do. The Bible says that there will be controls in place. There has to be control if they can stop someone from buying or selling, if they can stop someone from going to the grocery store, if they can stop someone from being able to work, to earn a wage, you would think that everyone should have the right, the right to earn a wage, right? To work. And if you've worked for it and you've earned the money, you should have the right to spend it wherever and however you wish. Amen? Do we, do we see that? Do we agree with that? Employers have very strict and um, stringent rules in place right now saying that they can't discriminate against somebody by their color or their age or their, you know, their ethnicity or their sexual genders and, and such. What if, what if that were to change? What if they kept all of the current criteria in place and had an exception clause. An exception clause says, well, they can't discriminate against your age or your race or your gender except for, except for. That's what I want to talk about tonight is the exception clause. Except for. What would happen to you if you could no longer be employed? What would happen to you if your job said, tomorrow, don't bother coming back? Or don't bother coming back until, until. What is the until? Well, until you have the mark. Well, you can't work here unless, you, unless you're one of us, unless you believe the way we believe, unless you will comply, unless you will submit. You can't work here. So they let you go. You on the market now. You say, hey, I, got, I, I had plenty of jobs. Jobs come and jobs go. I, I go someplace. But then you find out that wherever you knock on whoever's door, digitally these days, you find out that everybody has the same notice. We won't discriminate against this, 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 except for. If you don't have this particular mark, doors are closed to you. You can't work here no more. You can't get a job here. What would that do to you? 
I'm, I'm, I'm talking practically. Just, 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 just work with me for a little bit. What would, would that do to you, your home, your family? How long would you survive? How long would you have housing? How long would it be before you were on the street? If you can't go and buy anything, that means you can't buy food. How long before you're begging on the street? How, you can't buy anything. They won't let you in the store. You go in the store to, to go pay for something. I got money. Uh, it's, it's, we, 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 we give service to whomever we choose, and we choose to not give service to you because you don't have a mark. You're not part of the club. Y'all, y'all with me? So the Lord is letting us know that this is an escalation path. This is the path. There is a path to this particular ultimate outcome. The Lord goes on and says, you won't buy or sell except, I've already given you an exception clause, except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who understands calculate the the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His, na- his number is six, six, and six. Now, many people have tried to identify who, who this person is um, for a long time, ever since the scripture was written. We're not here tonight to try to, to identify who, who the Antichrist is. Uh, most likely, his actual identity won't be... F- well, certainly it won't be fully understood. You might suspect, but it won't be fully understood until the abomination of desolation, right? So the Bible says clearly that's when he will be revealed. And Lord willing, hopefully, will be gone before then, will be raptured before then. So I'm, I'm okay not knowing who he is. If I know who he is, that might, that might mean something bad for me. <laughs> I stayed a little too long, praise God. Um, but, 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 we wanted to see the escalation pass, so I want to go ahead and move to our next video, I mean our next um, PowerPoint. This is the scripture we just re- referred to or reviewed. Keep going. So coming to an American city near you, what is a vaccine passport? We started talking about this some time ago, certainly before it was in the news. We started talking about vaccine passports right after COVID hit. This was probably in the March time frame, April time frame of last year. When we began to see that this is serious, this ain't like all the other ones that, are, that, that you know, they, they pump up and get everybody excited about it and it just fades away and it just goes away the next day. You know, they've had a, a number of those kinds of things, you know, the bird flus, the swine flus, and et cetera. Um, this was different. We felt that this one was different. We started talking about, well, what if there was a, some kind of form or paper that was needed for you to transact your business? What would happen to people if, they didn't get the shot. What would happen to those who exercise their individual right to say, I'm an American, I don't have to, I, you can't force me to take something that I don't want to take, whatever my reason for not wanting to take it. I, might not, I just might not like shots. I might not like vaccines just, just in general. I might have something very specific about this one that I don't like. I might not like the fact that this particular vaccine, so-called, has never, the, the technology behind it has never worked in a human before. I might not like the fact that the technology that is used has killed every animal in every animal study that has been used there. I might not like that. I might not, I might not say, I might say, you know, normally vaccines have 10 years of, of time to, to, to see how they're going to affect everybody in, in the population. I might say, mm, I need, it needs some more time. I might. 
I might. I might say I want it right now. But it should be my choice. It should be my choice. Right? It should be, it should be your choice. Well, President Biden just a little bit ago signed an, an executive order saying, I want y'all to look into doing this. I want to look into having our country all on the same page around this idea. Very interesting. Next slide. So you've ever heard of during the time of the Nazis, they would come up to you and say, papers. Papers. What was, what was the paper? What was, that, what was that all about? Come on, um, um, high school students. What was that all about? It was your ID. You had to prove who you were and that uh, you, 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 you were legitimate and being there. You, you had to prove. You had to show your papers. No matter whether you were, you were traveling by horse, <laughs> car, or, or train, uh, or boat, you had to prove who you, you got to show your papers. So this was interesting because I, brought, I got this out of um, the um, New York Times. Um, digital papers, please. New York becomes the first state to roll out IBM's digital COVID-19 passport. This was a long time ago. No, it was March 26. What day is today? Isn't this the 31st? Mm-hmm. Just a couple, just last week. They, they, they rolled out on the 26th a program that they've been racing toward. New York's not the only one who's racing toward this. Um, any number of states are racing toward it. Um, Europe is racing toward it. Um, I'm going to show you in just a little while Israel and where they are in this. But the whole world is racing toward something. They're racing toward this. Why, why would this be interesting to you and I tonight? What could this pretend for us? What, could, what, what glimpse of the future might this be for us? Hmm. Next slide. So these passports were, will be, uh, they, they, they're framing it as a ticket to normalcy. This will get us back to normal. Their normal will never come back. No, no, this, what is even happening now is not normal and it's going to continue to digress. It, there will be no normal uh, ever again, but boy, they're going to they're spin it and sell it as a way to normalcy. Um, they went on to say one way to, to think about vaccine passports is to consider them a get out of jail card. Why do I need a get out of jail card when I have not been a criminal? Why, why, why do I have to prove something when I haven't done anything wrong? I don't need to get out of jail card. I haven't broken any laws. We're supposed to be the land of the free. We're supposed to be able to, we, we, we are that people. We are that nation. You can't force me to do something. But now I'm going to have to get a card, a get out of jail card. I'm going to have to show my papers. I'm going to have to prove something. I'm going to have to prove I'm innocent of the disease. I thought in our country you were innocent until proven guilty. Oh, no, no, no. No, you, you're guilty until proven innocent now. You, you are sick unless you've been proven inoculated. Uh-huh. Next card, next. That, that came from PolitiFact.com. Keep on going. <coughs> So in the U.S., catch this, in the U.S., private businesses have the right to make up their own rules about their customers. Some businesses, and I underline this, some businesses may want their customers to prove that they've been vaccinated. Legal experts have likened the vaccine to passports to no shoes, no shirts, what? No service, 
no passport, no service. What are the implications? You mean the store that I like to go to could say, I, you can't come in here? I want to I wanna go to Mickey D's. They say, no, I can't serve you. You say, I want to I, I go into my, my, my local Mexican restaurant, and got the, the dish that I love. You can't come in here? You, you, you mean I can't go into the mall? You, you mean I want to go shopping at, I can't go into to Nordstrom's? You mean there are, there are going to be courthouses closed? You, you, you mean I can't, I can't if, if my job decides it's a business, if my job decides we, we're, not, we're not letting anyone work here, we're not servicing anybody here unless they have their papers, you can't work here. You mean we're that far this quick? They could decide that tomorrow? Who they going to serve? And if, you, if you're not all vaccinated up, you won't be served? Is that where we are? We're right there on the edge. We're right there. We're right there. Next, next, please. Green Pass. Green Pass, hold up before you start that. Green Pass. This is what the program is called in Israel. They call it Green Pass. Um, this, this is a slightly longer video. I, it, it was a much larger video. Um, I had it had someone cut it down for me, so it's not quite as long. I'm going to need you guys, once we start it, to watch me very closely because I'm going to have, have you pause it at points, right? And then you'll just be resuming it because I'm going to want to highlight some things. Um, she's going to tell you what is happening in Israel. She's an Israeli. She's going to tell you that Israel is the guinea pig. Israel is al has already taken that step forward that I was just suggesting could happen tomorrow. They're already in heavily incentivizing people that they have to be inoculated, that they have to have their papers. And if they don't have their papers, they become a second-tiered citizen. By second tier, it means you don't have the rights that everybody else has who have their papers. If you don't have your papers, you're going to have to sit off over in a corner. You're going to have to not be, you can't come in this line. You're going to have to, you're going to be treated differently. You're, you're, you're a scourge, you're a pariah, you're, you might be sick. You know, we used to say, you got the cooties. <laughs> you got the cooties. Something's wrong with you. Because you're not doing whatever, you're not submitting, you're not, you're not one of us. You're, you don't have your mark. You don't have your mark. Let's, let's roll a little bit of this. It's called the green passport. We're not told to wear it, but what they have done is they have essentially overnight created a second class citizenry, a, a, a true medical apartheid that is uh, disallowing healthy law abiding tax paying citizens from entering their places of culture um, if they do not participate in this experiment. It's that it's that simple. You literally we've been told there are people who have been kicked out of their choirs, out of their pools, out of their gyms. I don't know who's going to hear the message we're saying. I don't know what is going to become of it. I know that there is no other option than to give every fiber of energy and strength into battling this because because there is no other option. There is there is everything to lose and everything to gain.
Ilana, Rachel, welcome in the Black Box Studio. Uh, yesterday I listened to a kind of a disruptive audio file from you all the way from Jerusalem. It's a very bad situation here. They're making people wear a, a ankle bracelet. It's absolutely insane. But meantime, we just keep fighting, you know? Fighting as much as we can. So we need everybody's help because whatever happens here will happen everywhere will happen everywhere. So we're fighting for ourselves and we're fighting for the whole world. But we need help. We need every bit, every, everything, every hand on deck. It gave me the goosebumps and that's the reason why I wanted to talk to you directly to report from your side what is actually going on in Israel. What's going on in short, I don't know if there is a short version, but that our Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has taken the initiative to sign us up without our informed consent to be the um, experimental subjects for Pfizer's rollout of their experimental technology. Um, and they are doing so with just short of brute force, um, using coercive methods of threatening people with their livelihood, threatening young children, 16-year-old uh, kids, that they can't take their matriculation exams. And the rollout of this has been um, very, uh, while this plan is for many countries, um, in, in other places they give you the option to come and sign up, but here there's, there's no option. You pretty much need to come and do it it's already as if the science is settled, even though it doesn't even exist. And there's a profound governmental and social pressure already to, to rush into this, um, this experiment. And, uh, and, and in Israel, they don't even speak about it as if it's an experiment. Well, the rest of the world is fully aware that's exactly what this is. Are you saying that vaccines are mandatory in Israel right now? Vaccines are not mandatory in Israel. However, this COVID-19 shot is, well, it's just short of it. I Meaning they say that it's not a have to and it's not a force, but the reality on the ground is, is people are losing their jobs if they're in the health, um, if they're doing any sort, sort of health professional. There are many, many different um, places where people are, 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 are told that you vaccinate or you're out. You told me something uh, before in this audio file about people wearing a kind of a badge around their wrist, uh, the free pass or something like that. What is that all about? It's called the green passport. We're not told to wear it, but what they have done is they have essentially overnight created a second class citizenry, a, a, a true medical apartheid that is uh, disallowing healthy law abiding tax paying citizens from entering their places of culture um, if they do not participate in this experiment. It's that it's that simple. You literally we've been told there are people who have been kicked out of their choirs, out of their pools, out of their gyms. Um, like I said, there's incredible social pressure and division between families and this this um, illusion of science that you're not participating in. So therefore you become this virus carrying um threat to the rest of us, even though, of course, there's there's simply no existing safety studies. So it's really all, um, it's really in the name of science, they're actually doing something that's that's really just, just an illusion. What is happening with people from abroad entering Israel, for example, by an airplane? What do they have to do to participate in society again? So it's, it's, it's one of the worst displays of what's happening you'll see in the airport they uh, i actually just this morning read someone's personal um account of coming home and his happens his parent happened to have been a survivor a holocaust survivor and he literally felt that he was in a selection it was very clear those who have taken the shot or have recovered from the vaccine get to go to the left the, those who have not go to the other side and must and are forced into these filthy petri dish uh, hotels um, that they have to either sit there and they're all swabbed with this PCR test. 
And uh, then there's also the option. Again, the, the rules change from morning to night. So she's talking about them being separated into hotels um, for um, the isolation, for the quarantining. Right. So they have to stay there and quarantine for X amount of time um, after they're, they're swabbed, they're being tested and they have to wait for the test results to come back um, before they are allowed to get into the rest of society. Right. Those that have the green pass, those that have been vaccinated, they're, they're just free to just go on about their business, go home, go do whatever they want, want to do. Um, so they're, just, they're free citizens, but everyone else is a restricted citizen. Um, when I was last, when I last went down to California just um, a month or so ago, um, they were trying to, they made an announcement from where we were sitting getting ready to, to plane, and they told us that we needed to quarantine, was it for 14 days? Yeah, Quar quarantine for 14 days. If we were not essential travelers, um, I, I considered what I was doing essential. I was, I was going back for a funeral, um, a memorial. Um, but um, but I, I look carefully at the list of things that they consider essential. They didn't consider that essential. I did. So so um, so I, I didn't quarantine myself. But what they wanted was anyone coming in that was not that had not been vaccinated, that had not basically didn't have our papers. We were to come in and go to a hotel and stay quarantined for 14 days. Who can do that? Who can do that? I don't have time to be sitting around for 14 days waiting, waiting for y'all to test me and everything. This was in California, right? This was in California. And so we, we've seen New York. I started with that. I led with that. Um, this is coming to a city near you. This is coming to the United States. And it'll be interesting to see how everyone responds when the restrictions start happening. I wonder how many will say, well, I, I need to do this and I need to do that. And I, I got to So I got I, I, I got to take it. I just got to do it. Right. I got to work. I got to do. The preparation, the, the, the breaking down when you when you're training someone and when you're training a wild animal, you, you don't you don't start with the most difficult tasks. You start with the easiest tasks. If you're going to train an elephant. You just you get him to trained to just stay on his rope. <laughs> then you can train him to, to kneel and to do. What am I saying? I'm saying that we have to be trained a little bit by a little bit, because if they try to train us all the way to the mark, that's not happening. Everybody's going to rebel. But if they can incrementally train you, get you into compliance, get you into obedience, get you into subjugation a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Now when they say, well, you got to take this other thing too. Well, I've been taking everything else. I've been taking everything else because I got it because I got to do. The Lord says that's going to be a terrible time and it's a terrible thing for people. Uh, would you get your book, your Bibles out to Revelation? <coughs> And let's turn to Revelation chapter 14. I'm still talking about the mark of the beast. Is this a good up update for you guys? I mean, who knew, right? Th these things are happening right under our noses. These things are happening today. Revelation 14, beginning with verse 9, and I'm reading again from the New King James Version of the Bible, and it says this, Then the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image, and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, anywhere, anybody. He himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out, how? Full strength. Everything that the Lord has done to you, with you, up to this point, has been diluted. Every punishment, every correction that God, every chastisement you have received has been diluted. It has not been at full strength. Everything that he has done has been through the grace of God. 
He's looked at you through the prism, through the perspective of mercy. My mercies are renewed every day. That means that when you beg mercy from the court, if you, if you so find yourself uh, transgressed against the law of the land, and you know you're guilty, and the judge knows you're guilty, and he's getting ready to sentence you, you give, they'll give you, most times, they'll give you an opportunity to address the court. And you can say, judge, have mercy on me. I've learned my lesson. I see the error of my ways. This will never happen again. And you might be able to convince the judge to give you leniency, to give you mercy. Mercy is all about I'm guilty, but I don't get the full extent of the punishment due to my guilt. Y'all with me? God has looked at us with mercy. The wages of sin is death. And God, all of this time, however long you've been alive, when you have sinned, and my God, you have sinned a lot, you deserve death every single time. Not one time, but every single time you transgressed him. And he looked at you with mercy and said, no, I'm not mercy. I'm just going to correct him a little bit. I'm just going to get her right. I'm just going to try to straighten her out. I'm going to try to turn her around because I love her. But the Lord says there's coming a time where mercy has been removed from the table. Grace has been shut up and God is going to pour forth his wrath with full measure. I'm just going to, I'm going to blast them. I'm going to give them what they deserve. This is what he's talking about here. Let me continue. He says, he shall, the one who takes this mark, he shall be tormented. When you see the word shall in this context in scripture, it's a promise. It technically, it's called a forward-looking promise. It's a promise that means, although he might not do it at that moment, he's going to do it. It's coming. God is given a promise, and every promise of God, whether it's good or bad, I mean, whether it's to your good <laughs> or to your bad, is yea and amen. And so the Lord says, I'm, gonna, I'm giving you a promise. He shall be tormented with fire and not just fire only, but fire with the added flavor and the added uh, incentive or extra of brimstone, the accelerant brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. I could stop there, but the Lord doesn't. And the smoke of their torments ascend forever and ever. Some people say, well, God's punishment doesn't last forever. They just don't believe God. God says very clearly that it will be forever and ever, and they'll have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image, and, so, and whosoever. What does the word whosoever mean? It means anybody. It means everybody. It means it don't matter what your station is. It don't matter what your classification is. It don't matter what your title is. It don't matter how much money you got. It don't matter. He says, whosoever, don't matter if you've been a preacher, don't matter if you've been a teacher, don't matter, no, no, don't matter if you've been a, a, a songbird in the choir, it no matter whosoever, whosoever has this mark, this is going to apply to them. Whoever receives the mark of his name, amen, amen. When we get to talking about and I can forward you guys the, the full video. Um, I'll, I'll, can, we, can we send that out through our text, brother, the link to that, just the link to our, our drive? 
Yeah, so we can send the link out. Um, just, just go ahead and, and would you make a note of that? We'll send the link out for the video to everybody that's, that's a part of FC. Um, and, and you'll be able to go ahead and watch the entire video, the entirety of it. It, um, it goes for about um, 12 or 15 minutes or something like that. I didn't want to take the whole service to do it, but you got the gist of it. You understand what's happening. And you understand that this ain't something in the far distant future, in a time, you know, you know how they do those things, in a time far, far away, you know, <laughs> the, the, the Star Wars thing, you know, like, no, 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 no. This is happening as we speak as we speak. And this is what I like to do with, with, with First Church. Um, I, I like to keep you up to date, and I like you to understand prophetically what is happening in real time, what's really happening in the world. We want to preach real time. We want to preach real relevant messages that will help you in your day to day. People need to be saved. People need to be delivered. People need to be strengthened. People, people need to hear a real word, an appropriate word for today. I'm not talking about prophecy only. I'm talking about whatever is needed. But when it comes to prophecy, there are so many who don't know anything about prophecy or what they do know is wrong. And the Bible is almost one third prophecy. And you have so many ministries who will not touch this with a 10 foot pole. And the truth of it is, is they're doing their congregations a tremendous disservice. If God will spend a third of his Bible, a third of his word talking about prophecy, how much more should we be talking about it? He wanted us to know. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Forewarned is forearmed. We have strength in our knowledge and in our understanding. We know the pitfalls. We know the deception. We know not to fall for certain things. We know that the enemy is going to come like a flood with a tremendous amount of deception in the last days. And if the people of God don't understand what's real and what's up, what's happening, We'll fall for the rope of dope too. We'll fall for it. The Lord says if it, that even the elect was almost deceived. Even the elect. So we won't be one of those who fall into a deception. From time to time, so I'll just give you these updates. Um, there, there are some other stuff that I told you I'll give you updates on soon. I told you I'd give you some updates on the Great Reset. I've got some stuff I'm, I'm, I'm pulling together for that. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. There are some things related to the Great Reset that, interestingly enough, Biden talked about today. His multi-trillion dollar bill is feeding and funneling money into the Great Reset. It is. I'll be, I'll be bringing you the specifics soon. Um, but it's happening, brothers and sisters. I'm not saying it's, go it's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm saying it's happening. This is the time when the people of God need to be most vigilant, most vigilant, most prayerful. This is the time when if you want to be saved, as the Lord says, make your election sure. Make your election sure. Live prayed up. Live repentant. Live looking for the Lord. Live loving the truth of God. He said the reason that those, those rascals going to fall into a great deception, a great delusion, is because they love not the truth. What separates us from so many is a love for the truth. You got to give me truth. I've got to have the truth. Don't tell me no lie. Don't tickle my ears. Don't tell me what I want to know in my flesh. Tell me what's real. Tell me how to be saved. Tell me how to live. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand for that? So are there any questions for me? Yes, Jake. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Um, there it is. Excuse me one second. <clears throat> so I mentioned the grocery store.
Right. You did like a some a, a different job, but a different payroll. You know what I'm saying? Like under the table. Does that make a, does that make sense, to you Pastor? So you're working, but you're not on the regular payroll. They're paying you under the table. Yes. Okay. So okay, what about it? Is is that is that like is that possible? Oh yeah, there'll be like, a lot of without getting the mark to mark of the beast, like under pay, getting paid under the table. Yes, great question. Great question. Did, did somebody have, was somebody saying something? In yeah, out in the open. You won't be able to buy anything, just walk into the door and, and buy anything. Um, that's true. So um, there, we, we've studied, as we've gone through tribulation, we've talked about the tribulation saints. We remember this. Um, there, there are going to be men and women, boys and girls, I assume, who are going to make it through the tribulation. We've talked about the fact that when we go into the millennial kingdom, there will be people who come out of tribulation and go into the uh, and go into the millennial kingdom. They're going to populate that kingdom. Those that have been uh, that are righteous, those that have given their lives to the Lord, but have not been caught. <laughs> no one caught them and, and executed them. Right? Um, no one cut off their heads. <clears throat> so those people will go into the millennium. <clears throat> How do they make it through? How do they make it through that tribulation period? How do they make it through three and a half years of not being able to work, um, not having a home, um, not being able to, to go into the grocery store and buy something? How do you do that? It's going to be the under, underground market. It's going to be the black market. They, they're they're going to have to barter with whatever they barter with. They're going to have to, they, they're just going to have to survive. Um, they, they're going to have to run. They're going to have to hide. They're going to have to just survive. They're going to have to just get through it, right? So um, the question was, will that happen to us who are saved? <clears throat> it's going to happen to them who are saved, yeah. right? So sometimes uh, the church wants so badly for everything to be so easy for us. <laughs> Somebody said amen. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, we, I know we want it easy. I know we want it easy. I, I know we want it easy. <clears throat> um, and so far the Lord has made it exquisitely easy for us, exquisitely. I know we sometimes have people who complain about how hard it is to be saved. You're just a, a wimp and a marshmallow. <laughs> you're, just, you're, just, you're just a baby. You're just a baby. Can I say the truth? Then I just say I'm going to tell you the truth. Did I not say that? The truth of it is, is we got, we, we got, we got a cush job here. <laughs> we got a cush gig right here. Um, living for the Lord is, is sweet and is easy compared to trying to live for the Lord in so many other places around the world. You try to live for the Lord in China. You try to live for the Lord in Russia. You try to live for the Lord in India or Iran or Iraq. You try to live for the Lord in some of these places. And oh my God, you're going to come to a different conclusion. You're going to understand how easy and how cush and how pleasant it is for us here. This is easy stuff. This is really easy. We should not have our mindset set on easy. There is no easy, easy button. God will allow you to be challenged before the tribulation or in the tribulation. We should, we should not have conditioned ourselves that if, if, if I run into a circumstance, if I run into an affliction or a trial, that means, you know, woe is me, throw my hands up, I got to give up. This, this, ain't, this is too hard. The Lord says we are to endure what tribulation hard as a hard soldier, as a strong soldier. We should have our minds so made up that nothing can separate us from the love of God. So having said that, brother, I don't think that we're going to see all of what we were talking about with the mark of the beast and all, all that. I don't think that we will see all of that but we're already seeing at today the beginnings of it right that, that was that was the lesson tonight we're seeing the beginnings of it does that mean the lord is going to come next week maybe is the lord going to rescue us before it gets harder maybe but but maybe not but maybe we will be here another 
seven months, so another seven years. Perhaps we're going to see a lot more of it than you want to see. Well, why am I saying this? Because the children of God have to be prepared for whatever it is we're going to run into. If you got it, your mind all wrapped around easy, the easy button, then you're not going to make it. You got to be, you got to be ready to, to withstand something, right? We're going to see more than we see today, Jake. We're not going to see, I don't think, all of it, but we're going to see more than we see today, and we're going to have to be ready for it. You're going to have to be ready for it. You might have to step down from your job at some point soon because you refuse to do certain things. And you can't come and say, well, pastor, I, I don't have no other way to make money or I'm going to get kicked out of my house or I'm going to lose my, I'm going to, how am I going to feel? You're going to have to do what you got to do. But there are certain things that we cannot do. And one of them is we cannot take that mark no matter what. If you're going to starve to death and your children with you, you better starve to death and let them do, die too. Then mark them or mark yourself because whoever has that mark, they're going to pay for that forever. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, who? Oh, would you pass it down, please? Thank you. I guess we have at least one more question. Um, yes, Pastor, we do have mm -hmm. one more question. Uh, the, the question came from online. Yes. Um, actually, it's Brother CJ. He's asking, how does digital purchasing tie into this digital purchasing on Amazon, on eBay, or Bitcoin, et cetera? Excellent question, CJ. Um, I, st I started to actually tie some of that in today. I just ran out of time, so I wasn't able to, to do it. Um, so digital purchasing, digital purchasing. So that's when we you know, whip out the phone and I go to Apple Pay and I pay for this or that or the other thing or jump on the, you know, a Venmo or whatever. Um, I, use, I use digital purchasing almost every day, right? Almost every day. So it, it has become a part of our society. The, the trajectory, the trend is that we'll move further and further and further away from currency, money in your physical wallet, dollars. And we're going to move further and further and further toward electronic um, currency, electronic financing and such. The whole Bitcoin um, craze that is going on. How many of you have heard of Bitcoin? Just about everybody? Just about everybody? Good. Bitcoin is a substitute, a potential substitute for your dollars. The dollars you might have in your wallet, you can have Bitcoin or slices of Bitcoin or fractions of Bitcoin. And, and, and that, can, that can substitute. And so digitally, you can buy things with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is completely virtual. There is no physical representation of Bitcoin. It's not something you can put in your pocket. It's not something you can slide in the slot machine. It is, it is completely virtual, virtual currency. Now, Bitcoin is under attack in a lot of ways, and, and so is a number of other of those what are called cryptocurrencies. That's, that's the, the name they go under, cryptocurrency. They're under attack. Um, Bitcoin may or may not fail. Not, you know, I, I don't know but it's certainly under attack. There are those who want it to fail. The reason they want it to fail is because the government can't control Bitcoin. Bitcoin is set up in such a way that you as an individual have your own private um, rights to it, it's yours. The government does, doesn't know how much of it you have. They can't control where it flows. They can't track, track where it flows and that worries them. Now, under the, under the guise of, of, of criminal activity, they say, well, we got to have control of, of this Bitcoin because we don't know what's going on. We don't know what money laundering is going on. We don't know what, what illicit things are going on. So we, we have to control it. So it's under attack. They want to destroy that. <clears throat> it gives us individual sovereignty. They want, but they want to replace Bitcoin with their own virtual coin that they control. 
So Facebook is coming out with a cryptocurrency. Google is coming out with a cryptocurrency. The government is working with both of them and others to create some new cryptocurrency that the government has some control over. What ultimately they want to do is it get back. It gets back to the beginning of our lesson is you can't buy or sell except you're given mama may I unless you're given permission. In order to shut everything down and send everybody underground, they've got to be able to control the flow of money. They've got to control money. Right now, I got dollars in my pocket. They don't know where, 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 what, what, how much I have in my pocket or where I'm going to spend them. And if I spend them wherever I spend them, they won't, they won't know. They can't connect it to me. This is why they've been pushing more and more electronic transactions is because they can get records of that. The banks work with the government. The banks will give them the full record of everything, <laughs> anything, every, any and everything in my account. They will say, this is what he's done. How, how far back do you want to know? Right? All they have to do is say I'm some kind of criminal or whatever, and, and they get the records. Bitcoin, they can't do it, so they have to have something else that they can do it with because ultimately they, they have to be able to have some control over the virtual commerce, but they also have to have some kind of control over you. They can't completely control me with my dollars, but they can control me if everything is electric, all they have to do is push a button. Say, you, you cut off. What do you mean? I got, I got $500,000 in my bank account. Well, I, what are you saying? I, I, I'm, I'm bouncing my check, virtual check. No, no you ain't got nothing. Why? Because you, you didn't take your mark. You didn't, take your, you didn't get your, vac your, your vaccine passport. No, no, you, you, you can't do nothing. So eventually we will have, have those systems in place and everybody will be compelled to jump on board and deal with that, except for the underground. Mm -hmm. Good question, Mr. CJ. Hopefully I, I answered that completely for you. Anybody else? D um, CJ, if I didn't answer that completely, please just throw a follow-up and I'll be happy to follow up. Okay. Ricky? Oh, hold on. He's going to give you the mic. I've seen on TV when um, that they were talking about how in the black market that they were already making fake um, vaccine passes mm -hmm. for people. They, 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 they jump on it quick, don't they? <laughs> 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 That's funny, man. That is funny. Yeah, yeah fake, fake vaccine passes. That's, that's pretty quick. Uh, at work today, the, the one that runs Oregon for the company gave a State of the Union for mm. all of us on uh, Microsoft Teams. And the way that they deliver, we're, we're now we're essential, so we qualify for the vaccine. And it's such a celebration that we qualify for the vaccine. And he's already gone through the beginning process, and it, wasn't, it didn't take but a minute. And all you have to do is press a button, and you're signed up, and it doesn't hurt. And, and the way that they're presented is that it's such a privilege to be able to uh, have this opportunity to be vaccinated and to get back to the norm, as you were saying, and to get back to reality. Um, so I was thinking about that as you were, you were saying, um, that that's, that's what the push is, is to get back to normal, but there won't ever be a normal and no one will, will admit that uh, on the outside, mm -hmm. that that's the way that they present it. And that's how they catch a lot of people. And as you said, they're going to continue to just follow whatever the government sets out there, whatever little traps there are, so that when the big one comes, they're, they're, they're too blind. They've been signed up for everything else. So they'll just continue to sign up so they can live the norm when reality that's nobody's normal. Amen. Amen. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Um, I guess it's a slightly somber class in, in the regard of, you know, this is some fairly heavy material as far as this is the life that we're living right now. Um, but I, I want to end it on a positive note. I want to end it on a, on a very high note. This, 
You know, the Lord says in the last days there will, there will be those who have understanding. And he gives us a promise. Remember, we talked about promises of God. He says, in the end days, those who have understanding will instruct many. Will instruct many. There's a lot of people that we have an opportunity to, to knock on their door, so to speak, friends, relatives, acquaintances, and whatnot, who have no idea what's coming or how close we are. Um, but it's up to the people of God to say, I'm going to do the work of an evangelist. I'm going to do the work of letting people know I have an understanding. I don't say that I have complete understanding, but you can say I understand the, 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 the principles. I understand that we're close. And you can help to compel men and women and say, hey, this, this, is, this is your day. This is, this is the time for you to, you need to come on in. And so I'm going to challenge everyone, and this is very positive. The Lord says we, 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 we compel men. We, 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 we go out and we, and we bring in those that would, that would want to know more about God, that would want to know the truth. There's a lot of people who don't want to be blind and dumb. They, they don't want to be that. They, they want to know the truth. And if we don't tell them the truth, they don't have a chance. At least if we tell them, they have a chance. Right? Whether they reject you or receive you, it, to some degree, that's, that's not even the question. The question is, will you do your part? Will you do your part? And let them make their own decision. We, we, we spent a lot of time talking about, I, would, I want to be free to make my own decision. Let them be free to make their decision too. But at least give them a chance. So I would hope, as we close this tonight, that everyone would just be sincere in their heart and be prayerful in their, their thoughts about who needs to know, who can I help, who can I perhaps let them know something that they don't know and bring them to church, bring them to God, bring them to God. I guess I was done. We got two more questions and I got one over here too. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. So I, I guess three, three more questions three more. That, that we're preparing for. So the, um, we have a flood of comments that are coming in. Um, one question in particular is coming from Sister Yet. To, and she's asking, what about us who cannot get the uh, passport? I believe the COVID-19 passport. We cannot. What about us who cannot get the passport? Question mark. Well, I'm not intending to get it. Perhaps we didn't understand the question or. What happens to those who can? So med medically, well, I'm, I'm saying medically, well, I'm, I'm saying I'm choose, I have chosen not to get it myself, right? It's not even a medical issue for me. I, I, that's just my choice. And uh, as far as every one of you and you online, that is your choice too. I'm, I'm not, I, just like I've just said, I don't want anybody mandating anything on me and I'm not trying to mandate anything on you. Um, but, but you need to educate yourself on what you'd be signing up for because the things that there are, they are injecting you in you. Don't go away. They become a part of you forever. They become a part of you forever. Okay. So I've made my choice. You'll have to make yours. Um, sister over here has a question. And you had an, another one? Yeah, the, the second one before we get to Sister um, yes. Dinah. So that, um, because your answer actually segues perfectly into that question. Um, for point of clarity, mm -hmm. The COVID-19 uh, vaccination or the passport is not the mark of the beast. Ah, that is a good question. And no, it is not. It is, in my opinion, a precursor. It is a training um, and conditioning for the mark of the beast. Right. But I think that the vaccine has is other issues besides the mark. Right. <clears throat> yes. Go ahead, sis. I just want to say that in California, they already have that where you can't travel to do that unless you have the card that needs the shot. Oh, so I didn't know that. I, I knew some parts of it, yeah, but I didn't know that they had made. So it's not just airplanes now. It's, it's everything or my other things. She's going to have surgery. Uh -huh. And she says, Diana, you need to get in there and get that card. And she showed me a picture. Of but, but, yes. Her name. People, so people can, online can hear you. 
She showed me a picture of her card where she took her shot. Mm. And she said, you need this card to get over here. And I'm like, you, okay. can send me, you can send me a copy of it. I'd like to see it, sis. <laughs> I'd like to see it. And another thing on the coin, if you, I tried to make a purchase, mm -hmm. and they refused me with cash mm -hmm. twice already mm -hmm. because I didn't have my debit card. Mm -hmm. So I had to go find him and, okay, let me use your debit card. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. Yeah, so they, they are refusing more and more. They're, 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 they're having shortages of, of cash and, and whatnot. And, and I've had a couple of times where people have said, you can't buy anything here with cash. More, more than a couple of times. You, you have to use some kind, of electronic, some kind of electronic income. So that train is moving. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Yes, sir. Yes. Strict. COVID has been an umbrella for a lot of change. Yeah. Okay. I get, looks like we're done for tonight. Amen. So let's give the Lord a hand. Let's thank the Lord for enlightening and helping us. We want to thank those that are online. We appreciate your support. Continue to support our ministry. Continue to... Um, to send out the links, continue to do the watch parties, continue to let people know what we're doing and give them a chance, give them an opportunity. God bless you and Lord willing, we'll see everyone Sunday. Bye-bye.